problem with air pollution today in America is that most of it is no longer visible. Um, 70, in the 1970s, we were dealing with smog and we were envisioning LA and you know, these basins of yellow smog. And today, the insidious air pollution problem is largely invisible to the naked eye. And so having the technology that can, can make the invisible visible to people through the data and numbers um, is really important, I think, to realizing the change because we need awareness before we have change. What we're seeing is data as a way to have new relationships to your community, to people around you. Here in Portland, uh, air quality data is the DEQ is offering this data up real time for people to use. So far, maybe not a lot of people are using it, but that's another kind of data. And I think even our own, even in our own lives, so not these, not just national databases or local city databases, but in our own lives, we're generating more and more kinds of data ourselves through different kinds of sensors that we might have around the house or on our bodies. I call myself an accidental activist. Um, I was just on the computer internet one day and uh, looking for actually the, the farm to school lunch program and instead found industrial air pollution in school study that was published by USA Today. And it was a study of industrial air emissions across the country and um, America's schools. It was a study that allowed you with a search engine to put in your neighborhood school and see how, how it ranked. And we were really astounded to find out that our neighborhood school ranked in, among the worst in the country. We're collecting more and more data about ourselves or even our houses. So a lot of people are now doing monitoring of their electricity at their home on various appliances. It's these kinds of data that we didn't have before that we're getting access to now that will help us form different kinds of relationships with our world. Every day we're, we're, we use information to assess the quality of our schools. We use information to um, choose the best businesses that we want to do business with. We use the information to assess the, um, the livability of our neighborhood. And I think that this is just another important component to understanding our environment and, and the, the inherent risks and making change to be adaptive to that. So the data economy isn't here yet. And I think we'll know when it arrives when we start taking notice of how we spend our data and what we're doing with our own data. So we don't pay much attention to it now because we don't have much control. So I think when we start thinking about, well, I'd like to use my data to help the National Institute of Health. How can, we, how can my data help those people suffering with asthma, have better program, health programs for the nation, have better design for cities? How can my data help in these efforts? Ultimately, it helps us understand our environment better. I think that information, whether it's delivered through the internet or a technological device, um, helps people understand their environment better in their own personal environment. And that understanding and that knowledge can then help either motivate or otherwise give people the tools and motivation to advocate for change.